Welcome back to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we demystify every node in the Unreal Engine Material Graph. Today we're looking at world aligned textures. Let us jump right into it. So, in this material, I have a node called world aligned texture. Now, what I'm going to put into it is a texture object. Now, if you don't know what a texture object is, it's basically just an object that contains a texture. And you can put this same texture object into multiple texture samples, you know, if you wanted to. And if you change it here, it would change it for every sample, but that's irrelevant. Now, the reason this takes a texture object rather than a texture sample is because this is actually going to sample the texture for us. And let me just change this to a, a cloud texture. Okay, so now if we look at our end product, you'll see that it has textured it with you know, this texture that I that I specified. Doesn't look very uh, interesting at first, but it's until I start moving it around that it starts to, starts to make sense what we're doing here. So if I was to only move it in this axi, uh, you'll see that it isn't changing the position of the texture. The texture stays where it is as the object moves along in world space. Uh, same with up here, same with over here. Very, very, very cool. So what this node is, it's actually a material function that just comes with the engine. And what it does is it maps the same texture three times, one in BG, one in RB, one in RG. So if we draw this in paint, <laughs> as we do, um, that's our Y axis. This is our X axis or the red axis. And this is our Z axis, blue axis. So it's using absolute world position, which I have a tutorial for right here. And it's masking one of them in Z, Y. It's masking one of them in Z, X. And it's masking another one in X, Y. And so this one gets splattered onto this side and the, the side behind here. Um, this one here gets splattered onto that side and this one gets splattered onto the top side. And so it's projecting all those three textures at once, but you can't just blend them all willy nilly. They'd all overlap each other and look absolutely crazy. So then what it does is it uses vertex normal world space, which I have a tutorial for here. So what it does is it takes the vertex normal, it masks one of them in R uh, and then it absolutizes it which is going to make all the negatives positive, but keep the positives positives. So that looks like this. So each side on the red axis is white, uh, zero in the middle, one on either side, and then it applies contrast. And this, this contrast parameter is adjustable. And so that creates a sort of a, a bit here. Then it also takes a mask in B, I believe. I believe. <laughs> Absolutes it and has contrast uh, and then it uses these two masks in a lerp which i have a tutorial for here and this one goes first and we're just going to say let's let's do our axes colors so we're going to put a red one here we're going to put a green one here so if we were to just look at this then we're looking at our red and our green axi uh, and then it overlays over the top of this one another lerp so the blue is going to go in here. This one's going to go in here. Then that one goes into there. Uh, and so you can see by this that we now have a set of masks that's going to let us know, okay, we only want the X, Z texture to go here and here. And we only want the Z, Y texture to go here. And we want the X, Y texture to go up here. So that's sort of the, um, like how the back end of it is, is functioning. It's just a combination of vertex normal world space and textures that are projected using absolute world position. So with that out of the way, let's jump back into our world align texture thing. Uh, we're going to pump that in to the base color again, and let's go through what all these parameters do. So texture size is a, takes a vector three, uh, and this is going to specify how big the texture is uh, for each tile in world space. So the default value is 64 by 64 by 64. We're going to go with 500 by 500 by 500. Uh, these don't have to be even. Uh, you could just put in a scalar value and it would go, you know, the same thing if you wanted them all to be uniform. 
And so this is going to make our texture bigger. Now, world position, you can apply an offset. If you get your world position and you add a vector three, uh, and let's just have a look at this in real time. So if I was to add, let's say 40 in the G, then you'll see that this moved over 40 units in the, in the G axis or the, the Y axis. Uh, I could move it up in the in the blue axis and you know this one moved up that one moved up but this one stayed the same because it isn't being affected export float b is a boolean uh that's just going to output a a four vector instead of a three vector so it's going to have an alpha that's not really that important uh the world space normal you can adjust the actual um angles that this is getting projected on it's a little bit too much of a rabbit hole for this this video. <laughs> and then we have the projection transition contrast. So this is going to, you can see here, there's a bit of like blurriness between where each one is projected. If I set this to one, you can see it's even, you know, less contrasty. If I was to set this to a hundred, you'll see there's very distinct lines where each, um, each texture is projected. So you want to do this to taste. Obviously you don't want it too hard and you don't want it too soft. And so when you rotate an object around, if it's at specific angles, you will get sort of a fade between them. So bad luck. So you're probably wondering, okay, this is cool and all like, but what's the benefit of this? Um, the benefit is <laughs> if you are a lazy prick like I am, uh, you don't actually have to worry about UVing your objects. Uh, this can work really well for like natural objects. So if I had, uh, you know, a big rock or something, I was going to use it to make, you know, a cliff. If I was to start, you know, mashing all these together and, you know, doing this and, you know, let's put another one over here and we, and we rotate it this way. You can see that all of these are blending together seamlessly because, you know, from this view, the texture lines up perfectly between each object. And if we look at it from this angle, you know, they are, they're lining up. Uh, I couldn't even see where the seam was. Okay, so the seam is here. And so this means in your 3D modeling program, you don't have to worry about UVing or, you know, making sure that all the textures tile, if you know that you're gonna be doing this in advance. And it also has the benefit of, you know, you can put anything at any angle. You could even use like different objects. Uh, maybe I can grab one of my cliff assets and it is going to line up with this you know perfectly you could also input a normal map so instead of using the world align texture node um, because normal maps have very sort of specific ways that they work um, since they are you know directionally mapped you would want to use the world aligned normal node instead and so what this one's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that your normals are all functioning properly at each angle now there are a bunch of other world aligned nodes uh, you've got world aligned bland world aligned normal world aligned reflection uh, world aligned texture and they're all used for different things but they all essentially function the same way so that was the world aligned texture and world aligned normal nodes. Just to recap, they map your textures in a triplanar fashion using vertex normal world space and projected textures using world position. Uh, it's super useful for having a bunch of objects that you want to share a texture, useful for landscapes, things like cliffs. It isn't gonna work for anything that is moving. You know, you, you wouldn't be able to use this on a skeletal mesh unless, you know, you were going for a very specific effect because the texture would stay where it is as the character is moving across the screen. It would look a bit funky. So I hope that that kind of demystified what this node does if you've already been using it. And if you haven't been using this node, uh, I hope that, you know, this is another handy trick that you can have in your have in your tool belt. If you need any help with my tutorials or you've just got some Unreal Engine problems in general, join our Discord. We've got 24-7 support all around the clock, ready to ready to help you. And if you really enjoy what we do here on the channel, uh, feel free to check out our Patreon. So with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.